welcome and good evening to all of you i hope you have been staying healthy and happy and revising all of your uh, topics uh, i guess all the subjects not just medicine uh, but i presume that uh, medicine is the most lovable topic and the most lovable subject so you must be enjoying that right uh, so guys welcome all welcome dipanjali mohammad musa nehar good evening so how you are celebrating all your sunday i hope you have been uh, relaxing today a little bit or may if you have been preparing for the exam then i am quite sure that you have been doing the revisions or whatever the topic you have chosen right metro good evening chalo guys uh, uh, last day we have discussed some of the important mcqs and uh, i try to cover uh, you know uh, some part of endocrine some part of cardiology hematology right like uh, this thing uh, we try to cover all this uh, aspects uh, today i am going to discuss about one of the major important topic of the endocrine and you know it has never ever happened that uh, without this topic you know uh, no exam either it is fmg inic et neat pg examination even mle or mrcp nothing has been occurred and this topic from endocrine guys trust me when you are going to do your clinical practice whatever the specialty you choose you choose medicine pediatric gynecology whatever the uh, topic you choose the subject or the specialty you choose this is going to be there always throughout the lifetime can you guess what topic we are going to discuss i would like to recall you we have discussed diabetes so it is not going to be the diabetes it is another yet another important topic हाँ जी एनी गेस या मेडिको वेरी गुड इट इज थाइड या आई लाइक यूर यू नो गेस एंड आई लाइक यूर प्रिजम्पन सो इट इज गोइंग टू बी द थाइड टॉपिक सी थाइड इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम पेडेट्रिक्स पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू फ्रॉम गायनाकोलॉजी पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू इनफैक्ट मेडिसिन में तो बेटा पेडेट्रिक्स और इसमें मेडिसिन में तो थाइड आता ही आता है ऐसा कभी नहीं हुआ है कि बिना थाइड के कोई एग्जाम पूरा संपूर्ण हुआ हो सो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी दी इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक सो लेट्स डिस्कस अबाउट द इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक दैट इज यू नो थाइड थाइड अब नॉर्मेलिटीज राइट सो फर्स्ट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक वट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इज गोइंग टू बी दी हाइपोथाइडिज्म नाउ बिफोर आई प्रोसीड इन टू द हाइपोथाइडिज्म आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू टेल यू दैट दिस इज गोइंग टू बी अ टू वे क्लास राइट टू वे मीन्स it is not that just i am going to deliver my lecture and then i am going to sign it off it is going to be that i will be communicating with you by the chat and you are free to ask any questions any queries you have the right to stop me and ask the question only you have to write your query or something which is not clear to you you just have to you know type it in the uh, chat box right so can we start the topic everyone is here i guess हाँ जी करें स्टार्ट प्लीज राइट यस और यू वांट टू वेट फॉर अदर फ्रेंड्स टू ज्वाइन ठीक है मिश्रा जी चलो स्टार्ट करते हैं सो गाइस first of all we are going to discuss about you know uh, the most common is hypothyroidism so hypothyroidism we are going to discuss now guys understand the concept before we go into the detail that this is a endocrine disorder so this is a disorder of endocrine system where the thyroid gland is not able to perform or it is not able to produce adequate amount of thyroid hormone this we know hypo means not adequate so no adequate amount of thyroid hormone is produced why it is not produced in adequate maybe there is some structural defect maybe there is some structural defect or you can say maybe there is some structural function derangement there is a functional derangement right of thyroid gland 
सो देर इज अ फंक्शनल डिफेक्ट और फंक्शनल स्ट्रक्चरल डिफेक्ट ऑफ द थायराइड ग्लैंड दैट द थायराइड ग्लैंड इज नॉट एबल टू प्रोड्यूस एडिक्यूट अमाउंट ऑफ दिस हार्मोन नाउ लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड फ्रॉम द वेरी बेसिक थिंग सी दिस इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक एंड यू नो यू कैन क्रैक सो मेनी क्वेश्चंस ओवर हियर सपोज दिस इज पिट्यूटरी राइट एंड वी नो दैट बिलो टू पिट्यूटरी व्हाट डू वी हैव वी डू हैव दिस ब्यूटीफुल ग्लैंड व्हाट इज दिस ब्यूटीफुल ग्लैंड गाइस दिस ब्यूटीफुल ग्लैंड इज व्हाट इट इज गोइंग टू बी अ थायराइड ग्लैंड सो आई एम मेकिंग थायराइड ग्लैंड एज द we know this pituitary is going to release what hormone beta pituitary is going to release tsh thyroid stimulating hormone put your pens down and understand the concept over here thyroid stimulating hormone which hormone stimulating hormone so it means this hormone is going to stimulate what it is going to stimulate the thyroid gland now when it is going to stimulate the thyroid gland inside the thyroid gland there are you know cells or these cells by this stimulation they are going to release what beta they are going to release t4 and they are going to release t3 now what is the function of this t4 and t3 the function of the t4 and t3 is first of all i am just talking about the physiological thing the anatomical thing right there are two things main the first physiological thing that they are going to give a negative feedback which ne feedback negative feedback to the pituitary ki bhai we are working properly tsh is working properly tsh stimulating us normally so please release adequate amount of tsh clear so i repeat the pituitary is releasing what beta the pituitary is releasing this tsh this tsh means stimulate it stimulate the thyroid gland and in response to this it releases t4 and t3 this t4 and t3 goes with a negative feedback and gives the message to the pituitary to release adequate amount of tsh h got my point okay now this is the basic thing now when i talk about hypothyroidism there are two three things which are very very important that you have to keep it in mind that is most common in females most common in females so when you are going to encounter a question it is most likely going to be a female so age in the mcq is going to be the clue for you guys females right and how much is the prevalence over here the prevalence is approximately that it is as common as 4 in 1000 females 4 in 1000 females i am saying it is most common in females it means it is also it can also be seen in males but the prevalence over here is only 1 above 1000 so who is the winner females are the winner over here right okay ji this is very much clear second important point that the prevalence increases with age prevalence it increases with age another important thing so you can see a lady coming like 30 year uh, 34 35 40 50 years all the complaints signs symptoms of hypothyroidism will be written over there we will discuss in detail so point which i wanted to make over here is only this thing that age is going to be the clue gender is going to be the clue females have more prevalence over here got my point okay now understand the concept over here that hypothyroidism can result from a defect anywhere it is not just that that this pituitary is it is not just that the uh, this thyroid gland is not functioning properly but this thyroid gland can result from a defect anywhere starting from the pituitary right thyroid or even you know we call it as hypothalamic pituitary access there can be a defect there can be defect anywhere in the hypothalamic hypothalamic pituitary access pituitary thyroid access thyroid access this we need to understand this thing right okay based upon this thing thyroid can be actually segregated into two things so hypothyroidism hypothyroidism can be divided into broadly two parts what are these two parts beta these two parts are first it can be a primary hypothyroidism it can be a secondary hypothyroidism secondary hypothyroidism got my point i repeat what we have said that the defect can be anywhere where anywhere it can be in the hypothalamic pituitary 
thyroid axis now based upon this knowledge we know where can the be defect it can be this hypothyroidism can be of two types it can be of primary type it can be of secondary feedback okay okay now let's discuss about the first of all primary hypothyroidism let's discuss about primary this one kiski baat karenge hum log beta primary hypothyroidism so given not primary beta i want you to know what does this primary means very easy to understand primary what is the meaning of primary in gen normal english what is the meaning of primary primary means ki the main site right तो मेन साइड पूरे के पूरे इसमें क्या है वट इज द मेन साइड गोइंग टू बी ओवर हेयर द मेन साइड इज गोइंग टू बी ओवर हेयर इज दिस थाइराइड ग्लैंड इज दिस थाइराइड ग्लैंड गॉट माई पॉइंट ओके जी राइट इट कैन बी अ थाइराइड ग्लैंड बट बिफोर आई गो इन टू द डिटेल्स ऑफ दिस प्राइमरी और दिस थिंग राइट आई वुड लाइक टू मेक यू अ बेसिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग फ्रॉम दिस अवर प्रीवियस नॉलेज दैट सपोज दिस इज अ पेट्यूट्री बिलो टू दिस दिस इज अ थाइराइड ग्लैंड राइट pituitary was supposed to release what beta pituitary was supposed to release tsh and this thyroid gland was supposed to release p4 and t3 i am talking about primary first of all it can be defect anywhere in the thyroid gland now what happens my dear friend if the thyroid gland is not functioning properly it is not functioning properly it is not functioning properly so what will happen This T3 T4 won't be released in adequate amount. क्या होगा बेटा ये T3 T4 थ्री पर्याप्त मात्रा में नहीं निकलेंगे अगर ये एडिक्यूएट फॉर्म में नहीं निकलेंगे दे आर नॉट गोइंग टू गेट रिलीज इन अ प्रॉपर फॉर्म मीन्स आई हैव इरेज द नेगेटिव फीडबैक और देयर विल बी अल्टर्ड नेगेटिव फीडबैक पेट्यूट्री वॉन्ट रिसीव एडिक्यूएट अमाउंट ऑफ मैसेज एंड वॉट इट विल कीप ऑन डूइंग इट विल कीप ऑन सेंडिंग कीप ऑन सेंडिंग मोर टी एस एच मोर टी एस एच so eventually what is going to happen that the tsh is going to increase what is going to happen beta the tsh is going to increase whereas this t4 whatever the defect we are just going to discuss in a few minutes of time t4 and t3 is going to get decreased on a lower side so this is the basic fundamental when you are going to encounter a question of hypothyroidism do remember this thing that the tsh will be on a higher side this t4 t3 is going to be on a lower side basic funda is this got my point because the pituitary was not receiving adequate amount of you know uh, negative feedback right agar pituitary go negative feedback milega hi nahi if it is not going to have this message ki how much tsh needs to release it will keep on sending keep on sending the tsh tsh will keep on stimulating right but the thyroid cells or the you know uh, the t4 t4 won't be released in properly got my point this is the basic fundamental that you have to understand this thing okay ji right so there is a defect in the thyroid gland this we call it as primary one so what is called as primary one that there is a defect in the thyroid so first you understand this defect in thyroid defect is in the thyroid gland why i am focusing over here because just a few minutes ago i just said that the problem can be anywhere the problem can be in the pituitary problem can be in the thyroid problem can be in the hypothalamus also but here when i am talking about the you know primary thyroidism the main problem is in the thyroid gland we are going to discuss about the problems now what about secondary i told you it is going to be a secondary one also so here is the secondary now what does secondary means in normal english secondary means means the primary main site is working normally but the problem is arising somewhere else but the effect obviously is going to be at the primary site secondary means beta jo main cheez hai wo to theek hai but impact jo hai wo kahin na kahin aur aa raha hai uske karan uska asar jo hai wo primary site means ki thyroid ke upar bhi padega this is called as secondary so secondary hypothyroidism secondary hypothyroidism so secondary hypothyroidism right now in secondary hypothyroidism i am again making this here is the pituitary below to this is what beta below to this we do have this beautiful gland what is called as thyroid now the problem is this that the tsh was getting released from this pituitary and in response to this 
they were releasing what beta T4 and T3 which was giving a negative feedback but now my dear friend the problem is going to be at this level the problem is going to be at this level pituitary is going to be the culprit one or the pituitary is not going to perform its function properly that's why my dear friend what will happen the TSH is not going to be there or if there it is going to be in a very low amount in a reduced amount बहुत कम मात्रा में TSH होगा so first of all the TSH is going to be on a lower side now we know the what was the function of this TSH the function of the TSH was to stimulate the thyroid gland now if the pituitary is not functioning properly and the TSH is not an adequate amount who is going to stimulate the thyroid gland no one is going to stimulate the thyroid gland got my point now if it is not going to stimulate the thyroid gland what is going to happen my dear friend that obviously that there will be less of T4 and T3 less of T4 and T3 is going to be there right so less T4 and T3 so in secondary hypothyroidism what you are going to get there will be a lower TSH and there will be a low level of T4 as well as T3 are going to be on a lower side okay okay I will uh, Naji I will give you a hundred percent in English right okay so you got my point I repeat in secondary hypothyroidism beta where is the problem the problem is where the problem is in the pituitary away from the thyroid gland pituitary main function was to what beta to release TSH TSH is not there no one is there to stimulate the thyroid gland so what is going to happen the level of the TSH in the blood reports when you are going to see a lab investigation the TSH is going to be on a lower side and obviously if there is no one to stimulate what is going to happen this T4 and T3 is also going to be on a lower side we are very clear with this thing now let's discuss a little bit in detail about the primary hypothyroidism so let's give the heading primary hypothyroidism so primary hypothyroidism right now primary hypothyroidism can be further segregated into three parts how many parts three parts kon kon se parts beta teen parts kon kon se hai ye teen parts let's see the first one is congenital the first one is congenital congenital the second one is going to be the autoimmune one the second one is going to be the autoimmune autoimmune one and the third one is going to be yes beta it is going to be the iatrogenic one the third one is going to be the iatrogenic iatrogenic one so primary how many divisions three divisions can be segregated into three parts one is congenital autoimmune and iatrogenic right okay so let's take this first what is congenital hanji congenital इसके ऊपर ना अपॉन दिस देर आर टू क्वेश्चन मेनली द फर्स्ट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन दैट यू विल हैव टू आस्क इज दिस थिंग सो लेट्स गिव द हेडिंग कॉन्जनाइटल कॉन्जनाइटल वट इज द मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ कॉन्जनाइटल हाइपोथाइराइडिज्म आई एम आस्किंग यू क्वेश्चन वट इज द मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ कॉन्जनाइटल हाइपोथाइराइडिज्म हाँ जी आई एम वेटिंग फॉर यूर रिप्लाईज बताइए What is the most common cause of congenital hypothyroidism? So, understand this: worldwide iodine deficiency. iodine deficiency is going to be the most common cause it's going to be the most common cause right okay see dipanjali you are telling me thyroid a genesis i am coming to this this is a you know trick or this is a you know uh, another catchy point where you can make this you know this silly mistake over here i am asking you the most common cause now my question to you is this that if you encounter what is the leading cause of neonatal hypothyroidism there are two different question congenital hypothyroidism and neonatal hypothyroidism so if you encounter the cause of neonatal hypothyroidism 
न्यूनेटल हाइपोथायरोडिज्म न्यूनेटल हाइपोथायरोडिज्म यस देन आई विल एग्री विद द पॉइंट दैट दीपांजलि इज मेकिंग दैट इट इज गोइंग टू बी द थायराइड ग्लैंड डिसजेनेसिस इट इज गोइंग टू बी द थायराइड ग्लैंड डिसजेनेसिस it is going to be the thyroid gland dysgenesis right so please revise this two important questions iodine deficiency most common cause of overall congenital hypothyroidism if you uh, you know see that they are asking you a question that neonatal hypothyroidism then it is going to be the thyroid gland dysgenesis right okay ji okay another cause can be you know dysthermogenesis this hormogenesis understand the word beta i am writing this this means dysregulation hormo means hormone genesis means thyroid gland is not generating genesis means generation generate karna right to produce this hormone is not getting generated properly another cause is going to be the this hormogenesis another important cause is going to be the creatinism creatinism right so creatinism is basically due to dietary uh, uh, insufficiencies of the iodine right dietary insufficiencies of the iodine and it is mainly seen in you know infancy or in early childhood we are very clear about this thing okay so let's quickly revise about the congenital hypothyroidism so iodine deficiency one cause neonatal hypothyroidism another cause this hormogenesis and creatinism these are some of the important causes okay ji now let's switch to the next cause of primary hypothyroidism we are going to discuss is it is going to be the autoimmune it is going to be the autoimmune cause so let's give the heading autoimmune hypothyroidism autoimmune autoimmune causes kya word hai beta what is the word auto immune means understand the concept over here suppose this is a thyroid gland this is a thyroid gland these are the cells of the thyroid gland or thyroid gland our own auto antibodies there will be some auto antibodies which will this is an antibody i am just making a funny antibody over here just to make you understand they are going to settle down over here and they are going to you know eaten up or they are going to destroy the gland thyroid they are going to destroy the thyroid gland auto antibodies they are going to destroy the thyroid gland now under put your pens down and understand if the auto antibodies has destroyed the thyroid gland will the thyroid gland be able to produce t4 and t3 no it is not going to produce t4 and t3 so or maybe there it will be a less t3 or t4 so the t4 and t3 will be on a lower side means the negative feedback will not be in a proper role so the tsh is going to increase by the pituitary pituitary will keep on releasing what beta pituitary will keep on releasing t uh, tsh and but the thyroid gland is destroyed by the auto antibodies hence they will not be able to produce t4 and t3 in a proper manner right and this autoimmune hypothyroidism it is the most common cause it is another most common cause of hypothyroidism it is the most common cause of hypothyroidism particularly if we talk then what kind of autoimmune disease we see over here we see hashimotos thyroiditis hashimotos thyroiditis hashimotos thyroiditis got my point right so here the auto antibodies are destroying the thyroid gland that's why the t4 and t3 are not an adequate amount and there will be increase in the tsh ho gaya ji are you getting this okay so what was the third cause the third cause was going to be the ha ji the third cause was iatrogenic iatrogenic was the third cause so let's discuss about the third cause that is iatrogenic 
the third cause is iatrogenic hypothyroidism the word is iatrogenic understand the concept suppose that this is a thyroid gland this is a thyroid gland some surgeon is operating for some disease of the thyroid or maybe he is operating some you know uh, neck surgery or something accidentally he cuts the thyroid gland right this is called as what subtotal thyroidectomy or accidentally he removes the thyroid gland the whole thyroid gland total thyroidectomy then where are this t4 and t3 or whatever the amount of the thyroid gland has been removed or trauma to the thyroid gland it is going to give less amount of t4 and t3 again the story will repeat less negative feedback to the pituitary more of tsh will be there so then my dear friend the causes are first of all subtotal subtotal or total thyroidectomy thyroidectomy got my point so subtotal or total thyroidectomy right so quickly revise upon these three things that we have discussed about the primary hypothyroidism one was congenital autoimmune and iatrogenic congenital we know that iodine deficiency is going to be the most common cause if they ask neonatal hypothyroidism then the answer is going to be the thyroid gland dysgenesis or dyshormogenesis and cretinism apart from this autoimmune hypothyroidism what is the cause of autoimmune hypothyroidism hashimotos thyroiditis is going to be the cause where auto antibodies are going to destroy the thyroid gland that's why there will be less of t4 and t3 and less of negative feedback and the tsh is going to be on a higher side and then is iatrogenic while doing some surgery or trauma to the thyroid gland means this is not going to let the thyroid gland function properly because of iatrogenic trauma or whatsoever the t4 and t3 will be on a lower side again less negative feedback and then there will be more of t s h right so these are the important points now apart from this you know another causes are the important one which you often encounter in the mcqs and you will be able to encounter in you know routine daily clinical practice that drugs now my question to you is this i am waiting for you over here for 30 seconds please name me some of the drugs which are responsible to cause hypothyroidism it is the most common and most frequent mcq which has been asked from multiple years in your you know what over the examination you appear they love to ask this question in a story or maybe in a one liner mcq so i am waiting for your replies guys i am asking what are the drugs common drugs you can tell me right okay rishav i agree with your point apart from amiodarone can you please tell me some other drugs हाँ जी अपार्ट फ्रॉम एम एड्रॉन एनी वन एल्स सो ओके लेट्स डिस्कस अबाउट एम एड्रॉन एम एड्रॉन सो बेसिकली हाउ डज दिस एम एड्रॉन यू नो कॉजेज हाइपोथरेटिज्म to understand the concept i am sure that you must have read in pharmacology i am just going to give you a quick uh, you know uh, reply of this thing so basically it blocks the conversion of the t4 and t3 right it blocks the conversion of t4 and t3 which will result in a lower t3 levels right but this amiodarone does not causes hypothyroidism in a short time it takes a longer time so chronic use of or a long use of amiodarone is only going to cause hypo thyroid is do understand this thing okay so nihar i do agree with your point the second common drug is lithium 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 nihar i do agree with your point and i will really appreciate your answer if you would be able to tell me that how this lithium is going to cause hypothyroidism हाँ जी
See, lithium also inhibits the release of T4 and T3. So if there will be less of T4 and T3, the TSH are automatically going to increase. Right. Apart from lithium, any another drug you would like to tell me? Yes. Hanji. I am telling you a drug, giving you a hint. That drug is used in GIST. Hanji. Gastrointestinal stromal tumors or it is also used in RCC, renal cell carcinomas. Which drug is What is that drug? I am giving you a hint that there is one drug which is used in just gastrointestinal stromal tumors or it is also used in renal cell carcinomas or renal cell tumors. Twenty seconds, guys. Okay, the drug name is yes. Sunitinib. Sunitinib. So basically, what beta happens? We know this thyroid gland is a highly vascular organ, right? Now, what happens? I repeat, this thyroid gland is a highly vascular imatinib. Okay, sunitinib. Okay. So this thyroid gland. Just put your pens down and understand the concept over here. This thyroid gland is a highly vascular organ. What what sunitinib does? It basically blocks the vascular endothelial growth factors V E G F R. Right, vascular endothelial growth factors. So means it is going to reduce the blood flow to the thyroid gland. So if there will less of blood flow to the thyroid gland, what is going to happen? The T4 and the T3 is not going to be in an adequate amount. Right. Okay, and it is going to result in thyroid insufficiencies. We know this thing. Apart from sunitinib, there is another drug. It is a reserved drug for the anti-TB drug. I am giving you a hint. It is an anti-tubercular drug. Can you please tell me? And it inhibits. Again, I am giving you a hint. It inhibits the synthesis of the thyroid hormone. One anti-tubercular drug. One anti TB drug which inhibits the synthesis of thyroid or thyroid hormone synthesis, whatsoever you want to call it. Can you please name me that? Ten second, guys. Not isoniazid. It is not going to the first line drug. Okay, another hint. It is not going to the first line drug. So it is para amino salicylic acid. Pass para amino salicylic acid. It basically, guys, it inhibits the synthesis of thyroid hormone. Do remember this thing. Apart from these drugs, we do have anti-thyroid drugs anti-thyroid drugs anti-thyroid drugs now what are the anti-thyroid drugs like we do have methamazole 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 profile thiouracil profile thiouracil so these are the some of the other drug right so these all are the causes of what beta primary hypothyroidism. Here I told you it is not going to be the beta equiline. Uh, no, 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 no. I told you, no, beta it is not going to be the uh, primary drug. Okay. So let's quickly revise what we have learned till now. We have learned about the basic things of the primary hypothyroidism. We have discussed about congenital, autoimmune and iatrogenic congenital iodine deficiency most common. If they ask neonatal hypothyroidism, it is going to be the thyroid gland dysgenesis and dyshormogenesis and cretinism. Autoimmune Hashimoto's thyroiditis and it is going to be the most common right than iatrogenic. It can be a subtotal or total thyroidectomy. Drugs guys, most likely they are not going to give you this question directly. They may say that the patient is of a heart failure and he is having palpitations, he was on some drug, he has presented now to you with the complaints of lethargy, dry skin, all the clinical signs and symptoms they are going to put, which among the following drug is responsible, right? Or the patient had some, you know, if they are going to ask you about some anti-tubercular drug, they will just frame out the history of the tuberculosis. So you should be smart enough to figure it out 
and you should be you know uh, intelligent enough to recall this member oh it is pus or it is maybe sunitinib if sunitinib then there obviously it is going to be some tumor history so they are going to frame the question like this thing right can we proceed further so this was all about primary hypothyroidism now let's discuss about the secondary hypothyroidism let's discuss about secondary hypothyroidism let's discuss about secondary hypothyroidism as i discussed earlier what was the primary primary thing was that here at the thyroid means the primary side main side thyroid now i have written the word secondary hypothyroidism means the primary side was normal but the problem was far away from this primary side means far away where it can be pituitary it can be a hypothalamic problem right thyroid was functioning properly but the problem was away from there but where was the problem pituitary or maybe somewhere else in the hypothalamus due to the defect in the pituitary or maybe due to the defect in the you know uh, hypothalamic the thyroid got dysfunction so secondary hypothyroidism it is caused due to deficiencies of it is because due to deficiencies deficiencies of thyroid stimulating hormone or even thyroid regulating hormone trh we know trh is released from the hypothalamus tsh is released from the pituitary so there can be defect right so what is the net result going to be the net result is going to be that the tsh level is also on a lower side and my dear friend t4 and t3 is going to be on a lower side please mark it down the tsh is going to be on a lower side and the t4 and t3 you just have to remember this from where this tsh was coming this tsh was coming from the pituitary if the pituitary is not functioning properly obviously the tsh will be on a lower side there will be less amount of the thyroid stimulating hormone i repeat stimulating so there will be less stimulation to the thyroid and in this less response the t4 and t3 will not be an adequate amount right okay ji now can you please give me a common example we have read in gynecology also that what is this you know uh, uh, disease or what is that acute condition where you find this kind of um, uh, t3 is lower side tsh was on a lower side can you please name me that what syndrome i am talking about what syndrome i am talking about Anji, yes, guys, I am waiting for your replies. Doctor Singh, I agree there is a problem in the pituitary. Upadhyay, I totally agree with your point that I am talking about particularly Sheehan syndrome. What I am talking about example of this is going to be the Sheehan syndrome. It is going to be the Sheehan syndrome. Postpartum. pituitary necrosis or postpartum necrosis of the pituitary right okay ji second this is one second example is hypothalamic damage hypothalamic hypothalamic damage example this hypothalamic damage can be due to some tumors it can be due to some trauma or maybe due to some radiation therapy it can be due to some radiation therapy right so this is going to be the secondary hypothyroidism so quickly revise about secondary hypothyroidism it is because of the problems in the pituitary we know this so pituitary problems pituitary problems or you 
सर्क्यूटरी प्रॉब्लम्स राइट ओके जी और हाइपोथेलमिक डैमेज गॉट माई पॉइंट ओके नाउ गाइज वी आर अवेयर दैट वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट टू मेन थिंग्स वन इज वॉज द प्राइमरी हाइपोथेरेडिज्म एंड द सेकेंड वॉज वॉट सेकेंड वॉज सेकेंडरी हाइपोथेरेडिज्म नाउ वट आर द क्लिनिकल फीचर्स एंड वाई दिज क्लिनिकल फीचर्स आर गोइंग टू बी देयर वट आर द क्लिनिकल फीचर्स हाँ जी what are the clinical features now hypothyroidism results we know this thing from our basic knowledge that it results due to the deficiency or decreased level of t4 and t3 right now which leads to a hypometabolic state so what is this going to happen it is going to lead to a decrease in the basal metabolic rate and this will leads to some of the symptoms this will lead to some of the symptoms right Please just a second. Let me put on the charge. हाँ जी. So the clinical features. First of all, we are going to discuss about the symptoms, and then we will discuss about the signs. So when the BMR is going to be on a lower side, what the patient is going to have? Patient first will come with tiredness. Patient will have tiredness, or patient will have weakness. now this is a clue for you in the mcq when you are going to encounter this that a lady most likely i told you the prevalence increases with age and you know that uh, it is most common in females so do understand this thing i am just framing out a question so that you can have a brief idea a 50 year old female presented to you with the complaints of tiredness or generalized weakness this is the first clue tiredness and weakness on examination you find the patient is having dry coarse skin dry coarse skin patient will have feeling of cold patient will have feeling of cold right patient can have you know uh, what do you call it as a uh, weight gain patient will have weight gain right despite of low food intake patient will have weight gain patient can have hair loss patient can have hair loss alopecia can be there right guys why the patient is having a cold intolerance can you please tell me no i agree uh, weight gain constipation i am coming to Rishabh, to you, Rishabh, I ask you a question. I write the question over here. Constipation. You are saying constipation. I agree with your point. Now, why? Why the patient is having constipation over here? Simple, guys. Think logically. I am giving you a hint that in a hypothyroid state, there is a decrease in the BMR. if there is a decrease in the bmr what is going to happen my dear friend that there will be a retention of the water in the tissues i repeat there will be a retention of the water in the tissues and we know that this thing to push this you know stool whatever is the content is in the intestine we need to have you know water so that the motility of this you know content in the intestine keeps on moving but if the fluid or the water is retained inside the tissues because of low bmr what is going to happen less of the fluid or less of the water will be delivered to the gut and the stool or the content will remain inside the gut and patient will have constipation yeah decreased motility i agree rishabh the answer was this thing and my question was this another question was this why the patient had cold intolerance or the feeling of you know feeling cold this type of feeling why the patient is having because cold intolerance because decreased bmr so there is decreased calorie genesis so if the calories are not being generated or utilized properly patient will have that feeling of cold in tolerance okay then patient can have hoarseness of voice hoarseness of voice right then patient can have paresthesia paresthesia right because there is an increase in the pressure 
upon the nerves because of fluid retention right that's why the uh, nerves will get you know pressurized uh, for due to fluid retention patient will have paresthesia then apart from this patient can have you know menorrhagia first patient can have menorrhagia menorrhagia later it can lead to in you know as the disease will progress it can lead to oligomenorrhea oligomenorrhea and if not treated it can also lead to amenorrhea it can lead to amenorrhea right in advanced cases or in you know severe cases patient can also have impaired hearing impaired hearing right apart from this patient can also have difficulty in concentration difficulty in concentration difficulty in concentration and can have a poor memory poor memory guys among this do remember this thing you know in older age in older age poor memory always try to rule out a hypothyroidism this poor memory or memory loss patient is not able to collect his words or patient is not able to recall his past memory please try to rule out the hypothyroidism if in the mcq memory problem is written among that hypothyroidism written then please read the question carefully if the other symptoms like dry core skin feeling cold intolerance paresthesia some you know hoarseness of voice all this has been given definitely the answer is going to be the hypothyroidism but there can be some other neurological causes like alzheimer's can be there dementia you have to rule out so this severe hypothyroidism can also or you know in uh, geriatric age group this poor memory can be the cause of um, the hypothyroidism can be the cause of uh, you know this one poor memory right okay ji so these were all the symptoms now let's discuss about some of the signs what the you are going to examine in a patient so let's talk about the signs so the first very sign i am i have kept on telling you is going to be the dry core skin dry core skin right then cool peripheries i have explained you why cool peripheries cool peripheries patient will have puffy face patient is going to have puffy face right patient can have puffy hands feet all this because of retention of the water in the tissues that's why patient is going to have puffy face hands and feet right and what we call it as we call it as if all this thing is occurring puffy face hands and feet we are going to call it as mixed edema mixed edema underline this thing because this mixed edema coma is also the important topic so this is the clue that the patient is having puffy face hands or feet you may encounter a pectoral diagram of this also patient can have a decrease heart rate means patient is going to have bradycardia patient can have peripheral edema peripheral edema right patient can have a delayed tendon reflexes delayed tendon reflexes right patient can have a carpal tunnel syndrome because of compression of the median nerve carpal tunnel syndrome right and the important cases in severe cases you know there can be serous cavity effusions serous cavity effusions like pleural effusion pericardial effusion can be there right so this is all about you know the signs and the symptoms of um, this hypothyroidism 
quickly revise the signs and symptoms then we can proceed further towards the investigation part okay ji i hope you have revised so quickly let's see once again what are the clinical features because thyroid is not functioning properly there will be a reduce in bmr so symptoms will be tiredness weakness the important one this will be the starting clue for this tiredness and weakness so mark it as an important one apart from this the patient will have dry skin or patient will have cold intolerance patient will have weight gain despite of adequate or you know increased um, food intake patient can have hair loss constipation we explained hoarseness of voice because of edema uh, upon the vocal cords and the larynx right then patient can have paresthesia initially patient will present with menorrhagia then and uh, you know as the disease will progress patient can have oligomenorrhea or maybe the patient directly you know comes a female will come with amenorrhea amenorrhea there might be a history of infertility also and the cause is going to be the hypothyroidism so please read the question carefully then impaired hearing difficulty in concentration and poor memory signs are going to be the dry coarse skin one thing puffy hands face and feet if all this is there think about mixed edema right uh, apart from this thing if there is a decrease in heart rate you know blood pressure is going to be on a lower side then there the then the conscious level is going to be a lower side i repeat the conscious level is going to be a lower side then think of mixed edema coma we will discuss in detail about mixed edema coma right then peripheral edema delayed tendon reflexes carpal tunnel syndrome and serous cavity effusions these all are going to be the signs which in the question you are not going to get directly but yes in a story form or in a you know uh, some kind of clue you are going to get so once you have done with this all these things so how you are going to take this case uh, for an investigation how you are going to proceed to or approach to a case of hypo thyroidism haan ji can you please tell me what are the test or investigation you are going to do haan ji what are the test or investigations you are going to do so let's talk about the investigations so first of all we know that tsh is going to be there we know that tsh is going to be there so why don't we you we check the measure or check tsh so first of all we will look at the tsh now when we are going to check at the tsh we are going to find two things first we are going to find that the tsh level may increase or may be a normal thing it may be on a elevated levels it is going to be elevated or it is going to be a normal level right so i am just taking this elevated tsh over here so um, i can complete this in a diagram over here right so let's talk about the elevated level so if you find that i am saying that increase tsh i am talking about i will talk about normal after this uh, you know elevated of tsh level if you find that the tsh level is going to be normal what you are going to do you are going to check you are going to check or you are going to measure t4 levels unbound t4 levels you are going to see right now when you are going to check this t4 unbound levels again you are going to find two reports that whether this t4 level are going to be a normal one or maybe they are going on a lower side this is very important on a lower side right so you can see this on a decrease side means i am writing over here this t4 is decreased this t4 is decreased it is on a lower side so if it is on a lower side right if it is on a lower side what you are going to suspect you are going to suspect now what do we have overall we have overall that the tsh level is tsh level is increased and the t4 level is reduced t4 level is reduced can you please tell me what kind of hypothyroidism you are suspecting now han ji can you please tell me what kind of hypothyroidism you are suspecting hypothyroidism is it going to be the primary hypothyroidism or it is going to be the secondary hypothyroidism yes you have guessed right it is going to be the primary hypothyroidism right 
so in primary hypothyroidism we have already discussed that the t4 level is going to be you know on a lower side whereas the tsh level is going to be on a higher side now once you have suspected that there is a primary hypothyroidism and we know the causes of the primary hypothyroidism the most common cause of primary hypothyroidism is but beta it is hashimoto's thyroiditis now we have discussed that the hashimoto's thyroiditis is what it is an autoimmune disease autoimmune means on auto antibodies are going to destroy the thyroid gland so what we are going to check to confirm this what we are going to check to confirm this we are going to check thyroid peroxidase antibodies ab is antibodies tpo antibodies needs to be checked now once you have checked this tpo antibodies again you are going to find two things one thing over here one thing over here check tpo antibodies now tpo antibodies positive i am writing over here tpo antibodies is positive and tpo antibodies are negative maybe you are going to find this tpo antibodies to become positive and on the other hand they may not be positive so if the tpo antibodies are coming positive it is clearly indicative that this patient is having what beta this patient is having autoimmune hypothyroidism means hashimoto thyroiditis is there so autoimmune autoimmune causes autoimmune hypothyroidism causes autoimmune hypothyroidism got my point right if you are going to find this tpo antibodies are negative the tpo antibodies are negative over here then what you are going to suspect you are going to rule out other causes rule out other causes of hypothyroidism whatever the causes we have discussed rule out other causes of hypothyroidism so you have to rule out the other causes of hypothyroidism got my point okay ji but i quickly revise this table once again if you are going to find that the tsh level are based upon the clinical features signs and symptoms you have checked and now you have investigated you have checked first you have checked the tsh levels tsh levels can come normal and can uh, decrease if you see that the tsh level is going to be on a lower side you are going to check beta what you are going to check this one the important one you are going to check the t4 levels you need to check now if you find the t4 levels are going to be on a lower side you are again going to make a picture that the t4 levels are reduced and the tsh level is increased one thing is very clear the cause is primary hypothyroidism now we know the causes of primary hypothyroidism and we know that the most common cause of primary hypothyroidism is what beta autoimmune thyroiditis and we know how does it act because the auto antibodies they destroys how we are going to check we are going to check the tpo antibodies now once we are going to check this tpo antibodies right this tpo antibodies right this tpo antibodies they may come positive if they come positive it means it is going to be the autoimmune hypothyroidism but if it is going to become negative then means we have to rule out some other causes of the hypothyroidism right so it was a case where the t4 level was on a lower side t4 level was on a lower side but if we talk about this that the t4 level was normal then what if the t4 level is normal then what my dear friend then again my dear friend ha ji ha ji if the t4 was on a <coughs> on a normal side then tsh is increased i am telling you that tsh is increased and this t4 level is on a normal side t4 level is a normal then what you are going to do then my dear friend what you are going to do are you suspecting a pituitary disease is there any pituitary disease right if you are suspecting a pituitary disease then again you can suspect yes and you can suspect a no if no then no further test is required no further test is required but yes if you are suspecting a pituitary disease then my dear friend then again you are going to check the unbound t4 levels unbound t4 levels need to be checked 
right? Unbound T4 levels need to be checked. I'm just going to take this down over here. Now, this unbound T4 levels again can come in two ways. One, it can come as a normal or it can come as a lower T4 level. Lower T4 level and it can also come as a normal one. If it is coming as a normal one, then no further test is required no, because everything is normal now. So why we need to check or why we need to investigation? No further investigation. If the T4 level is on a lower side, then obviously we are going to check that what are the causes. Then first of all, we have to rule out some drugs. Is the patient taking some, you know, drugs like Amiotron, Lithium or Sunitinib or whatsoever the drugs we have discussed, then the drugs can be caused or maybe it can be due to sick euthyroid syndrome. Sick euthyroid syndrome. Sick euthyroid syndrome. And we have to further evaluate the pituitary functions also. So this is was basically one thing that you have to check the levels of the thyroid guys that how we have approached the thyroid gland. Right. So this is one thing you have to keep this table always in mind. So I am waiting for you over here for one minute quickly revise this table and then we can proceed further. So guys, can we proceed further? Are you with me? Please give me a thumbs up. Apart from guys, okay, thank you. Okay, apart from this, thyroid test investigations, the most important thing which we are going to do is the ultrasound of the thyroid, USG thyroid. Now why we need to do this ultrasound of the thyroid? Basically thyroid can be of lodular thing. So we have to rule out the lesions or the nodules in that thing. Obviously thyroid malignancy can be there, right? So we have to check for the lesions or the thyroid nodules. So check lesions. or nodules check the lesions or the nodules then if you find any lesion or the nodule then you can go for a fine needle aspiration right needs to be done fine needle aspiration needs to be done further right apart from this my dear friend the important thing which we needs to be done is other abnormal lab investigations we have to check is first of all we have to check for a CBC, complete blood count. As I told you, it can be due to some infections also, thyroiditis. So in infection or CBC, the first very thing you are going to find that there will be a decrease of hemoglobin. Now my question to all of you is this, that what kind of, you know, anemia you are going to find in the case of hypothyroidism? What kind of anemia you find in a hypothyroidism? Anji, please, I am waiting for your replies. Guys, my question, this is your homework that what kind of anemia you find normocytic. Okay, very good. So generally you find a normocytic or you may find, you know, um, uh, microcytic anemia also. 
in a case of uh, hypothyroidism generally you find a normocytic i totally agree with you varun so appreciate your answer okay apart from this we have discussed also that that in thyroid hypothyroidism particularly there is a low level of bmr means whatever the patient is eating it is not getting generated properly or it is not getting utilized properly so let's say the patient has taken more of fats so what is going to happen you have to check the lipid profile and in lipid profile you may find that there is an increase in cholesterol cholesterol right and there can be increase of triglycerides triglycerides you can find this right then the fifth test which you are going to do is you are going to check the serum calcium levels right or vitamin d level so all needs to be done right so guys quickly revise this thing so we are going to check a uh, thyroid in thyroid we have to check for the lesions or the nodules we have to check for a cbc and in cbc we may find an anemia we may find that the patient is having you know dyslipidemia or hyperlipidemia right patient can have a hypocalcemia or patient can have even vitamin d3 deficiencies we will discuss in detail in the complete class okay ji so we have investigated this patient now my dear friends let's talk about the treatment part how we are going to respond to this treatment so if they ask you a question for first of all for a clinical hypothyroidism patients who are asymptomatic and they are mildly symptomatic obviously uh, you are going to do nothing but if the patient they are asking very clearly for a clinical hypothyroidism what you are going to do you are going to give a drug by the name of levothyroxine levo thyroxin right and how this levo thyroxin is given it is given empty stomach 30 minutes prior to the breakfast in the morning time do remember this thing i don't know that whether they are going to ask you the dose but in harrison it is clearly written that it is 1.6 mu gram per kg because this is the common thing which you are going to encounter in routine practice that 1.6 mu gram per kg body weight is the dose you need to adjust right okay for this one and for sub clinical hypothyroidism where you find that there are biochemical abnormalities like there is a decrease in uh, you know uh, thyroid gland deficiencies i have told you and the patient is having you know few symptoms there is no recommendation in the management of the sub clinical hypothyroidism i am telling you very clearly but if they ask you that there is a female or a lady and she is she has conceived and or or maybe she is planning to conceive or they are planning a family over here then what you have to give you have to give a low dose of thyroxin low dose of thyroxin for a subclinical cases if the patient is symptomatic or particularly if the uh, patient is female and they are planning a family or even she is pregnant then low dose of you know thyroxin needs to be given how low you can give from 25 to 50 mu gram per day you know you have to give the dose right i don't know i don't am um, uh, have you know um, uh, this thing that um, uh, they may ask about the doses or no doses just uh, for your knowledge sake i just uh, told you about this doses right guys so i think we have done with this hypothyroidism right so quickly revise this hypothyroidism and uh, if any queries any question then please let me know so that i can sort out your queries and questions i am waiting for over here for 1 minute guys so that you can type all your queries if something is not clear i can reply back and i can sort out your queries
सुजीत मेनली नॉर्मल साइटिक एनी अदर क्वेश्चन so guys i really appreciate your presence right so thyroid is the important topic from examination point as well as the clinical point of view trust me you choose any specialty you are going to encounter so many question so many patients as well as the questions of hypothyroidism so please review this revise this and rock the show or rock your examination so thank you very much guys i really appreciate your presence and i pray and i wish for your success good night take care we'll see you in the next class thank you very much guys